I have always hate going to the park. And it's not because I don't like nature or anything like that. It's because I can't stand the sight of people playing with their pets. It just makes me want to throw up. Now, I know you might be asking, why would anyone not like the sight of cute dogs and cats? But after hearing this morbid experience, you too will never look at animals the same. My name is Taylor, and this horrific experience happened six years ago. I was 21 at the time, and I had just finished college. It was on a Thursday, and I had gone to the supermarket across from my apartment to buy some groceries. I barely had up to $10, so I bought very few things. As I walked up to the counter, I saw the cashier Jake staring at me. We weren't friends, but we knew each other as I lived close by. As I dropped the few things I bought, he looked at me and said, I don't mean to pry, Taylor, but are you low on cash? I didn't reply as I was embarrassed. He then looked at me with kind eyes and said, It's nothing to be ashamed about, Taylor, but if you're up for it, I may have a job for you. Hearing being offered a job piqued my interest, and I asked, What am I going to be doing and how much is the pay? He then told me, We can talk about what you're going to be doing later, and regarding the pay, he then brought out a thousand dollars and handed it to me. I was stunned as I hadn't seen money like that in a while. He then continued with, think of it as an advance. But remember, with pay like this, the job is pretty something. He then asked for my number so that he could get back to me with more details regarding the job. A week passed before I heard from Jake. I had already spent $700 of the one grand, so I knew I had to do the job now as I had already spent my pay. But I just assumed it was going to be something like cleaning the supermarket. That night, around 3 a.m., I got a message from Jake saying, Ready to know what the job is about? I remember telling him, It's pretty late, but sure. That's when he told me to download something called Tor Browser. I was confused, but I did exactly what he said. After that, he sent me a link and he told me, I don't know if you've heard of the dark web, Taylor, but this is a link to the dark web. He then continued with, this link is going to take you to a website where you'll see videos of women eating. Think of it as ASMR, but with a more serious take on it. He then sent the last message saying, This is just to prepare you for what you're going to be doing. And remember, that much money doesn't come easy. You start next week. And with that, he went offline. Now, a little feeling of dread began to creep up as he was acting so weird. And as I clicked the link, I finally understood what he meant as a horrific realization dawned on me. The link took me to a site called All Natural. The first thing I saw was a slogan that read, Welcome fellow true eater. I was asked to pay $20 to see the content, which I did. And when the page finally loaded, it showed videos of women eating raw animals. The first video I played showed a huge man holding a cage, seemed to be filled with kittens. I could hear the animals whimpering like they were scared. The woman in the video sat on a chair and she had a sick, devilish grin on her face, which displayed her blood-stained, rotten teeth. She looked like she was terribly ill as she looked pale and feverish. The man then took one of the kittens, and what he did next made me throw up on myself. With his huge hands, I watched him tear the kitten apart. It happened so fast that I couldn't hear the kitten squeal. He then tossed the carcass of the dead kitten towards the woman, and without hesitation, she began eating it raw. The sight was otherworldly as she ate it whole. I could see the little organs of the kitten spilling out of her bloody mouth as she ate it. It didn't take long before there was nothing left and the video ended. I screamed and I threw my phone away when the video was done. The noise had garnered the attention of my neighbor who knocked on my door asking, Taylor, are you all right? I didn't want him to know about what just happened, so I quickly replied, It's fine, I, I, I just thought I saw something. And with that, he left. I didn't fall asleep that night as I was deep in thought. I finally understood why Jake didn't tell me about the job before paying. And I understood why it paid so much as over 15 million people pay to watch each video. I knew I had messed up as I couldn't do it and I also couldn't pay back the money. So the next day, I started avoiding Jake and the supermarket. After a week, I thought I had gotten away with it. But as I walked to my apartment that night, I was attacked by two huge men and the last thing I remember is a white handkerchief being forced onto my nose. I woke up in front of a camera. I was surrounded by bright standing lights, which made it impossible for me to make out my surroundings. A huge man walked in, and with one look at him, all my suspicions were clear, as he was the man who tore animals apart in those horrific videos. And right after him, 
Jake walked in with a sick grin on his face. Why are you avoiding my calls, Taylor? I was scared, but I immediately replied with, I didn't mean to. I can't do this. Then do you have my money? He asked. Fear filled me as I had already spent half of it, but I said the first thing that popped into my head. I don't, but I'll pay you back. I promise. Please, just let me go. I'm afraid we can't do that, he said. So what are you going to do to me? I don't want to eat the insides of animals. That's disgusting. <laughs> disgusting. He screamed before slapping me hard across my face. We are true eaters. Like the lions, we eat the right way. Directly from nature. We don't let our meals be tainted by heat. We keep it all natural. Once he was done, I asked him, so you guys are cannibals? And that's when he hit me again. Don't associate us with cannibals, you dumb whore. Me and the 15 million people who tune in to see these videos are much more than that. We are enlightened. We are true eaters. I didn't speak as I was scared to be hit again. And that's when he gestured to the huge man that was standing in the corner of the room. Ivan, it's time to begin. And as the huge man picked up a cage, I started to count down the last moments of sanity I was going to have that night. The creature in the box squealed as it was taken out, and when they brought it closer, I could see that it was a huge gutter rat. The animal struggled, but it was hopeless as the man began to pull it apart. It didn't take long before it tore in two. The man walked up to me with the carcass of the dead rat. I tried to run, but that was when I realized I was restrained. He finally reached me and tried to force the carcass down my throat. I screamed and resisted, which led him to hit me. My vision had become blurry, and I felt them force my mouth open and force the furry carcass down my throat. No words can ever describe what I felt, but I felt like I was tasting hell itself, as different things that I assumed were the organs of the animal rolled down my throat. I began to vomit profusely, but that didn't stop them as they just continued right after. It took 30 hellish minutes for it to be over, and I just stayed there quiet as I had lost all zeal to fight. They untied me and took me to a small room where they kept me. I threw up all night and I laid there in my vomit. Every night for the next week, I was taken to eat another animal, from sloths to puppies to little birds. Each one was worse than the last. It didn't take long before I began to feel ill. It was on what I assumed to be Friday. I started hearing loud noises from outside, followed by, it's the police. Hope filled me and I was about to say, I'm here. I began to convulse. The last thing I remember that night was being surrounded by cops as I finally passed out. I woke up in the hospital to see my mom, a doctor, and my neighbor all standing around me. The doctor began to tell me how lucky I was as a lot of harmful bacteria like salmonella and listeria that are normally found in raw meat were found in my system. I asked my mom how the cops found me and she said my neighbor had noticed I had been missing for a few days and had called the cops which led them to track my phone. I thanked my neighbor Mr. Matt for saving my life. Some cops then walked in and asked me some questions and I told them everything I knew. They then told me that I was lucky as over 70 women were found in the warehouse and half of them were dead. They said the case was still ongoing and they were trying to get to the bottom of it. At that moment, I knew to myself that there was nothing they could do as over 15 million people out there were true eaters. And there was nothing anyone could do to fix that. It's been six years since this incident. I moved back in with my mom and even with all the therapy, nothing can ever take away that trauma. I can't eat right as I only eat when it's necessary. I also can't look at animals right because every time I see a dog or a cat, while people see the beauty and the cuteness of these animals, all I really see are their insides. Hey guys, before starting the next story, I would like to suggest to you guys to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. And if you have already subscribed, then you guys are awesome. When I woke up this morning, I had no idea my life is going to change forever, soon. For the last few months, I'm struggling to earn a single penny. I lost my job during the pandemic. I'm drowning in debt and my landlord has already given me the final warning. If I don't manage to collect $200 rent today, he will throw me and my pregnant girlfriend out of this house. Till now, 
We're living on Twinkies and vendor machine snacks. But now, I don't even have money to buy that as well. All of our furniture is gone, as I had to sell them to sustain ourselves in this tough time. My girlfriend Kelly needs proper care and medication in this condition, but I can't do a thing for her. Being disgusted with myself and my life, I left home early today. Now, I am wandering in the streets, looking for one opportunity to earn some cash so that we don't end up in these streets. But fate is not looking up. I am exhausted. I can't tell if I have a fever since last night. After walking for three hours straight, when I didn't see any ray of hope, I sat down on the sidewalks. I felt like I'm going to faint soon. Suddenly, my phone rang. It was Kelly. I picked up and heard her sobbing voice from the other side. Jimmy, the landlord said he'll be coming around 7 p.m. and throw me out of this house. Where are you? Please come home and do something. I could hear the bundled up pain choking her voice, but there was nothing I could do to save the day. I put my hands into my pocket and a damp cigarette, a matchbox. There's no cash in my hand and only $50 are left in my bank account. I don't remember when I passed out. I probably lied on the corner of the sidewalk for hours like a garbage bag. When I woke up, cars passing by the daylight was gone. I quickly looked at my phone and saw it was 6 p.m. already. An hour or more and my pregnant girlfriend will wander in these streets like a beggar. Such a man I am. Throbbing pain in my head made me nauseous. I vomited on the street right away. Somehow, I still managed to get myself up and look for some water. I took a dingy alley on my left and found a tap. I drank as much as I could. Water is now my only option to suppress hunger. My phone kept ringing. The screen lighted up with missed calls from Kelly, but I didn't pick up once. What will I say to her? I don't have any money, any food, anything. After washing my face, my eyes went to a broken bottle lying on the ground. Yes, that's the only way out now. I can't tolerate the pain anymore. It will be a relief if I end my life and set free. I broke the bottle to get a piece of glass. I said to myself, one deep cut and all my pains will be gone. This is the only way out. I sat down in the dark alley and lit up the last cigarette I had. It tasted a bit funky, but beggars can't be choosers, right? Also, I'll cut my wrists once I finish this smoke, so it doesn't even matter. But what about Kelly? How will she survive on this street without me? Should we commit suicide together? No, I can't say that. She's with my child, a life growing inside of her. Oh God, please show me a way. But I knew no one is going to hear my cry. I remembered how I used to surf the dark web during my high school days while smoking just like this. I still have the tour browser on my phone, but it has been a long time since I went there. Cluelessly, I opened up the Tor browser and started this old hobby once again. I don't know what I was looking for, but something kept telling me I will find a solution here, only here. After surfing for 10 to 15 minutes, an ad popped up in the corner. Looking for recluse? Hire hitman with only $50. I don't know what got into me. I clicked on it. A sketchy website opened and started asking for victim details and addresses. Once you fill in the details and make the payment, the hitman will contact you. I saw a way out. I can't let Kelly struggle in this cruel world after my death. She too has no one, just like me. And I can't approach her with this idea of suicide. My only way out is to hire a hitman and set her free from this blood-sucking world. I filled in the details, gave my house address. My hands trembled while I booked murder for the love of my life my unborn child. Judge me all you want, but I had my back against the wall. As I made the payment, a message popped on the screen. Hitman will contact you in a second. Remember, once you finalize the deal and disconnect this call, there'll be no turning back. Why? Why will I turn back now? There's nothing left for us here. It'll be better to end our lives than to spend it in humiliation and poverty forever. A call came from an unknown number, and I picked it up immediately. Hello? The job will be done in a half hour. Is she alone in the house? Y yes. 
Once I disconnect, we will have no contact whatsoever. Is the deal final? I exhaled a deep breath. Tears rolled down my cheek as I tried to say yes. The man with a dense voice spoke again. Is the deal final? I took one deep breath and replied. Yes, the deal is final. The phone got disconnected and I noticed the time was 6.30 p.m. Kelly might be sitting home waiting for me to come back with money and save the day. I put the cigarette butt in the dirty ground and picked up the broken glass to bid goodbye to this world. Life is not the same for all in this world. I looked at my phone one last time. Once the clock strikes seven and our doorbell rings, Kelly will rush to answer me, thinking I've finally returned home. Poor Kelly. She won't be able to guess death is waiting for her on the other side. I wiped my tears and went to slash my wrists with a sharp piece of broken glass. Just then, my phone rang again, but this time it was from my bank. Out of confusion, I picked up saying, Hello? A female agent said from the other side, Mr. Andrews, we are happy to inform you that you have won our lucky draw this month. Congratulations! Your account will be credited with the prize money within hours. What? How, how much money is that? $10,000. You'll be getting the update soon. Thank you for banking with us. Have a nice day. The call disconnected and the broken glass fell from my hand. What? I have won $10,000? Finally, all our worries will be gone. I sprung up in joy. I couldn't believe this. I looked at the sky and screamed. Miracles do happen. Thank you, God. Thank you. But then, my heart dropped into my stomach. It's 6.45. The hitman is on his way to my home. Holy shit. I started to run like a mad dog. What have I done? What was I thinking? I cursed myself while making my way through the busy street. I have to reach home before him or else everything will be over. A few moments back, I had a family, but no money to take care of them. And now, when I have money, my family's life is at stake. I bumped into people while running. Some of them hurled at me with anger, but I didn't care. I need to reach home before seven. I have to. I was sweating like hell. My heart was beating in my throat. I knew the end is near. Each second is a step closer to doom. Oh, Kelly, my love. I can't let you die because of my incompetencies and failures. I was almost near my house when I accidentally tripped on a rock and fell hard on the floor. My ankle twisted and I entwined in pain. I tried to get myself up just when I heard a loud bang and a scream from a woman from my house. I took out my phone with shaking hands. The time was seven o'clock sharp. I saw a guy wearing a hoodie coming quickly from my house and jumping into a camper van parked on the side of the road. The lines of the hitman echoed in my ear. Once the deal is done, there'll be no turning back. I started crying as my world broke apart. I had no guts to walk up to the house and witness Kelly's bloody body lying on the doorstep. I lie there hiding my face into my palm, sobbing like a low light when I heard a familiar voice. Jimmy, what are you doing here? Thank God you came home. I looked up and saw Kelly standing in front of me. Fear was all over my face. I got up in extreme shock and said, You're, you're all right, but that gunshot. I was packing bags when the landlord came. He was pestering me to leave right now, so I went upstairs to get my stuff when suddenly the doorbell rang and the landlord answered it. I heard a loud bang and now he is lying dead on the porch. I don't even know what happened. We have to call 911. Cops came and took our landlord's body. They interrogated us, and I didn't mention a single detail about the hitman. I'm glad instead of Kelly, our landlord opened the door. It scares me to think how ruthless these hitmen are. He didn't even risk confronting someone else. One payment, one kill. Doesn't matter who he killed and what impact it left. Kelly and I are in a better lifestyle now but I haven't told her anything yet. Every day before going to bed, I try to muster up the courage to tell her the truth, but when I look at her smiling, holding our baby daughter in her arms, I step back. This one secret is going to be with me till the day I die.
This happened to me last Monday when I came back from school. I'm an introvert who has no social life and no friends either. So as usual, when I came back, I got myself some light snacks and got hooked on watching anime. I was so engrossed in it that I didn't notice when it became dark. I was quite bored of watching so, I decided to try something different for once. All my classmates were talking about watching various videos up on the dark web, so I thought to myself, why not? I had no clue about how I may access it, which is why I searched up on Google. I learned that regular browsers couldn't access dark web websites. I needed to download a certain browser that was undetectable from search engines and offered users complete anonymity while surfing the web. Some websites suggested using VPNs while surfing to hide my IP address, and I thought it was wise to do so. I downloaded the suggested browser and started scrolling randomly. I found certain people who had posted videos titled in extremely unsettling words. There were certain forums such as the Cannibalistic Forum, which was about eating people and being eaten by people. Some members even chatted and arranged meetups there to eat each other like, I need someone to eat my fresh meat. I am juicy and tender. I then found a site that was about a woman who couldn't deal with the fact that her babies had been stillborn. It was filled with pictures of dead fetuses dressed up and placed in baby cots. I dug in deeper. My curiosity had gotten the best of me. Disturbing images and videos played before my eyes. I then realized that it was legitimate child porn and rape and torture content and it was all over the dark web. It was terrifying. They had live cams too. This was all too much for me. I wanted to stop right away but instead I scrolled unconsciously. I saw certain chat rooms of various titles that had unsettling words such as Midnight Stalking, The Morgue, Live Gore. I didn't believe that these were actually real. I was curious, so I clicked on one. The live stream opened up. It was a dark room, and there was a guy tied to a chair in the middle. Beside the chair was a table. It had various items on it, ranging from weapons to tools like hammers and axes. I didn't know what was going on until a man appeared in a mask. It looked like the mask that doctors wore in the plague, with a long beak that resembled a crow's. In his hand, he held a blood-stained knife. It was then that I noticed carefully that the man who was tied was hurt. He was bleeding and his wrist had deep cuts on them. His blood dripped drop by drop into the small pools of blood at his sides. Should I finish him? The man said in a strange voice. It sounded as if he was using a voice changer to deepen his voice. Was this a stage show? I wondered. I looked at the comment section. Everyone was telling him to finish him. There were comments which were extremely brutal like, shoot him in the head, put him in boiling water. But most of the people wanted him to use the ax on the guy. I saw the masked man pick up the heavy ax. My body froze as he raised it above his head and brought it down on the guy who was tied up. The ax got stuck in his head and there was a shower of blood spraying out of it. The man was presumably dead, yet the one with the ax kept striking him over and over again. I could hear his dying screams. I could hear the mushy meat sounds that the ax made where it touched him. The floor was splashed with blood. He did not stop there. He went lower and struck at his abdomen. It was sharpened to an extent where only one strike made his organs spill out into his lap. I actually saw his guts flowing out of him. I was frozen in place unable to move a finger. I then realized that I had just seen a man get killed. I felt sick and closed the stream. I regretted that I clicked on it. I wanted to close the tab, but it wouldn't close. Instead, it redirected me to another page where there were loads of other disturbing and horrible videos. There were several rows. In each row, there were four to five. What was really disturbing about them was that they were like a series. I kept scrolling hoping there'd be an exit button at the end, which was stupid. When I finally reached the end, I saw a familiar face in one of the videos of the last row. It was that man, the one I had just witnessed being killed. The first image was just him staring at the camera and completely normal. After that, there were pictures of him on the street, then of him sleeping. Finally, there was the video that I had just seen. It had been uploaded just now. When I looked under it, I saw a new row had been formed. The first picture was me staring into my webcam in the same clothes I was wearing now. I got scared and began to press the power button. Then I heard a beep and a notification popped out of nowhere which said, 
we see you. Finally, my laptop shut down. It had been there three days since then, and I couldn't help but look over my shoulder every now and again. One night, while I was trying to sleep, my phone buzzed, and I grumpily checked who it was at that time of night. It was a message. It was a video of me. A video of me asleep in the exact same clothes I was in right now. I was frozen in place and couldn't breathe. Then came the sound. From right beside my bed, heavy footsteps went running out in the hallway and eventually faded. Startled, I got up and flipped the lights on. My heart raced and my body was shaking because of the adrenaline rushing through my veins. I was scared to death because someone had been standing right beside my bed while I slept unaware. I hurriedly grabbed my phone from where it had fallen. Quickly dialing 911, I peeked outside to see who it was. There weren't any signals and I had zero bars. Frustrated and scared, I ran outside, conscious of the other person sneaking my way to the lounge. I picked up the telephone as quietly as I could, but all in vain. It was dead. The wire had been cut. What were the odds, I asked myself. The best thing to do, perhaps, was to run out of the house for help, which I immediately did. To my horror, there was a padlock instead of the regular lock. I had never seen it before in my life. What do you want? I shouted at the top of my lungs, half angry and half scared to death. Someone grabbed me by my hair and started dragging me. I screamed in agony and told him to let me go. He was huge and I was thin and weak. I stood no chance. He dragged me towards the basement and ruthlessly dragged me down the steps. I felt like that broke every bone in my body. He threw me on the floor, my head hitting it violently. I blacked out for a few seconds. I felt him tie me up. My hands, feet and legs were bound. I drowsily opened my eyes and saw him setting up a video camera turning on all the lights in the basement. That's when I knew who he was. It was a dark web video that he was shooting. Let, let me go, Pl please. He didn't give me time to finish before he slapped my face. He went and got a brick from beside the washing machine and hit it with all his might on my feet. The mushy, meaty sound it made was horrifying. The bones cracked so loudly. I screamed so loud, I'm sure anyone who was awake at the time would have heard me. To stop me from screaming, he hit me on my throat. It was so hard to breathe. He adjusted the camera and started cutting at my abdomen slowly. Hot blood started soaking my shirt and I kept on screaming. He laughed <laughs> maniacally and cut deep at my arm. He kept on going and I could feel the bone grinding as the knife rubbed against him. I could hear it. There was so much blood. He stood up and stomped on my face and kept on doing it until I was almost dead. He came forward holding the knife coming for my throat. Loud sounds could be heard upstairs and two police officers came running down with guns, seizing the intruder. Apparently, some of the neighbors had heard strange sounds from my house and called for help. I was barely breathing and the world grew darker. I woke up in a hospital. Turns out, the intruder was in fact the psycho serial killer they had been searching for. I was the only victim who escaped his wrath alive. I would have ended up on the dark web dead. <laughs>